the facing the room on the right wall of the room. Uh, there is one last corner, and we see here what is represented across that one last corner. It is a very young woman seated on a kind of a throne here. She has an attendant standing next to her. And then there's a small winged Cupid at the left. And then across the corner, we see another Cupid standing on a base, leaning on a pedestal, winged again. He's, his, his head and his on, on, resting on one of his hands. And he is looking across the corner at what is going on on the other side. And he looks very, very admiring. And in fact, who is he admiring? He's um, admiring another one of these young initiates, a young woman who seems to be readying herself to become a bride. bride. She's getting ready for her initiation. She wears a, a glorious uh, golden garment uh, that is wrapped around, wrapped around her waist. It's a purple, a purple tie, a uh, purple ribbon or tie, as you can see here. Uh, she is again accompanied by another woman, an attendant, uh, and the two of them together are, are actually fixing her hair uh, to get her ready again for her mystical marriage. I have a detail I'm going to show you in a moment. And then this wonderful anecdotal detail here where we see the other Cupid uh, wing it again, holding up a mirror in his hand. Uh, a rectangular mirror. And if you look very, very closely, and you can study this detail on your own as well, if you look very closely, you can see that there is a reflection of the young woman's face uh, in that mirror. Uh, so a, a lot of a, a lot of attention being paid to the readying of this woman to be a bride to enter into the mystical marriage with Dionysus. And we see a detail here where we can see her, see how pretty she is, see how uh, her, again, the artist has shown this extraordinary ability to uh, depict hair as it really is growing out of her scalp. You can see the part of her hair, the scalp showing through, the way in which the hair grows from that. And then you can see that not only is she working on arranging it, but she's getting help you know, from the attendant. The attendant also has a section of her hair in her hand, and the two of them together are trying to get her ready for her mystical marriage. Her arm is up. You can see both of her bracelets, one around her wrist, and another bracelet up on the upper part of her arm. Then we have another window, and then the last figure, the last figure that we see uh, is this woman here, a, a woman who is seated on a very elaborate throne. Uh, she too is veiled. She has, uh, again, a combination of gold purple garment, bracelet, she wears a bracelet, but she is veiled. So again, the implication is she too is a bride. She seems very placid, she seems somehow a little bit older than some of the other brides. And what has been speculated, and she's very pensive because she just leans one, she leans her chin on one of her hands. She seems to be sitting there, you know, off, right, at, right at the, again, again, the, the doorway of the room. She seems to be seated there and basically surveying everything that's happening in front of her. And because she looks a little bit older, because she looks a little bit wiser, uh, because she is looking out at, a pa at the panorama of what's happening in front of her, it has been speculated, and I think quite convincingly, that the woman we see here is probably the matron of the house, probably the wife of the man who owned and built uh, the Villa of the Mysteries. In
kneeling and has her head in the lap of a woman uh, who protects her. Here is the scene. So again, we see the figure, the winged figure with the whip. We see the object of the whipping, uh, this initiate here. Uh, she is kneeling. She is in the lap in part of a woman who seems to protect her or try to protect her. The woman who is trying to protect her, her eyes are very wide. She is staring up at the winged figure. Imploringly, it seems, almost imploring her, please, you know, enough, enough, please stop. Uh, and she is, uh, she is very nurturing uh, to the young girl who is undergoing this initiation. And she pats her on the head, as you can see here. An incredible view of uh, this woman, uh, the way in which the upper part of her body is exposed for the whipping, the rest of it covered in a voluminous purple mantle, as you can see here. Uh, also figures to her right uh, a naked woman who is, uh, who, uh, who is placed in front of, interestingly, a woman, a, a very heavily clothed woman in a dark garment, which only serves to accentuate the lightness of this woman's flesh. This, this sort of contrast of tension between clothed and unclothed also seems to play a very important part in this particular painting. But this woman is incredible. Again, the artist has, uh, has, has enjoyed uh, trying to represent figures from the rear as well as from the front. Uh, and you see uh, he has also uh, shown her on her tippy toes as she is so she has symbols above her head. She's crashing those symbols, uh, and then she is dancing on her, tip on her tiptoes down here. But it's an incredible feat because she also has this uh, gold mantle uh, that is over her shoulder and between her legs, and somehow she's keeping this mantle balanced as she is dancing and as she is playing her music. Uh, and then there's another one of an, another thyrsus of Dionysus that seems to be located that is located between these two women. And one wonders again how in the world that thyrsus is being held up uh, as this woman is uh, participating in this um, in this dance and music making over here at the right. To get back to this figure, I just want to show you a detail because I think in.